Hey, good morning, everybody. Today, I thought we would talk about Lightning Web Components a little bit. Just do something a little different, uh, mix it up from our Apex videos, and we're going to keep doing, we got lots of Apex videos coming. Uh, but I think it's more and more important to your career as a developer to understand JavaScript, to understand Lightning Web Components, and how this works on the front end of Salesforce. So, and I will say also, I have a, uh, I have two motives for making some of these videos. I always feel like I'm a, I am not as good of a JavaScript developer as I would like to be. I think like, I keep ending up on uh, backend projects for whatever reason. So I'm hoping that making some of these videos actually reinforces some concepts for me. That explaining them actually helps make me uh, a better front end developer. And that was one of my own big personal goals for 2020 was to really master the JavaScript programming language. And like everything else, it just takes time and practice. So today I thought for the first in our Lightning Web Components videos, we would just kind of dive in and really just look at the basic anatomy, do some really simple things, and uh, just kind of explore what, uh, what these web components are made of. So with that said, let's switch over to our editor. I'm going to switch over to Illuminated Cloud. And so I also have... For these videos, I have got a local development environment running, and I'll include a link to that in the YouTube uh, description section. Much, much easier sometimes when you're doing some of your development to, uh, especially with Lightning Web Components, and it, it, this does require that you're working in an SFDX project, but to work in a local development environment instead of constantly having to push your code up to a scratch org or a dev hub to see the results. You know, you change a couple pixels, change your color, and this lets you see it um, almost in real time. It's much, much faster, so I'm happy with that. Um, and I will say, so a couple, I'm going to say assumptions today are that you have maybe a little bit of a basic knowledge of web development, of, of HTML, of JavaScript. Not much. Uh, I'm certainly, I don't consider myself particularly great at it either. But we are going to dive in and uh, take a look. So I've got my uh, my local environment running. I'm going to close down my, or minimize my terminal window there. So first thing we're going to do, we're just going to create a Lightning Web Component. Lightning Web Component. And I'm going to call it my... Hello world component. We're just going to do something basic. Um, we're going to go with exposed and create a CSS file. And this is, again, these are just features of my editor. These are things that Illuminated Cloud does for me. Visual Studio Code does it slightly differently. Okay, so we have created our Lightning Web Component. And I, you can see I have three files here. So in my LWC folder, I now have, an L, I have a Hello World component. And in that component are three files, CSS, cascading style sheets, and this is where if we want to customize the look, the feel, the color, the font, we do it in our CSS. Our hello world.html, our HTML file, and this is the markup, the structure of our web component. And then the JavaScript, the hello world.js file, and this is where we do well, it's where we do our JavaScript, but it's where we make our component interactive. Probably the best analogy I think I could ever give of, say, of your CSS, your HTML, and your JavaScript is think of your HTML as the skeleton, the CSS as the skin, and the JS as the brains. Uh, and that's how you make the anatomy of this component. So, right now, there's not much there. And one thing I do want to show you is you also have a metadata file. And so, this is where we could decide where we want to allow this component to be used on a uh, on a record page, an app page, maybe just on an account page, etc. And we can set all of this sort of configuration in our in our metadata file, uh, which is just a you see it's just an XML file. We're not going to be doing any of that today because we're just going to do our development strictly here on our local server. But uh, well, you know what? I'm going to do it just in case some one of you are somebody's watching and you're not quite sure how to do that. So we're just going to do targets, and then in target, we are going, you know, I'm going to keep these on one line. We're going to say lightning under double underscore app page, and I'll make a couple more. So if you want to put these on an app page, a record page, a home page, record page. Okay, so there's a, there's an XML file real quickly for you. 
So let's go over to our uh, Hello World, our HTML file. And it's always going to begin with a template. And a template is just an HTML5 tag uh, to start a, a web component that's going to render when the JavaScript calls it. So we are going to, we're going to add an H1. And H1 is just a, a, a heading tag. This is a lightning web component. All right, let's go over. All right, so there you see our local development environment just refreshed. And I now have my Hello World component. I'm going to click and open that. And there you can see, so uh, with my typo and everything, right? Hover over that. Component. Uh, pretty simple, not very interesting, but we have our H1 tag, and this is what we would see on a web browser. And so this would be putting our text, whatever we're doing, right into our markup, which is not what you're going to want to do if you want to make this interactive. You're going to want your things to come from your JavaScript file. So we're going to do a real simple example of how we would bind a value to our JavaScript. So we'll just we're going to do another h1 tag. From from the JS file. All right. And then we're going to So what we do when we put that in the curly braces there we created a binding. And binding is just kind of a buzzword that says, hey, th this is going to refer to this value inside the JavaScript file. So we're going to go over here, and we call that a message. Message equals, and we're going to just set it equal to a string. Hello from the, from the JS file. And wait for our, so now, boom. OK, you can see this is a Lightning Web Component on our markup, right? That's what we see. And then the second h1 tag, this comes from the JS file. And then in our markup, we just have a binding to the message property. But if we look into our JavaScript file, we can see right at the top, we have set a message property and we set it equal to a string of hello from the JS file. So you can see where this would start to get more interactive as you're calling data from the Salesforce database and, you know, account names, lead names, email addresses. This is how you can use JavaScript to attach those values dynamically into your web component. The last thing we're going to look at real quickly when we are doing is, um, is events. So we've seen a static markup, how we combine a value from our JavaScript. And just for the sake of what we're going to do today, let's look at an event. Lightning button. So, and Lightning button is a base Lightning web component. See when these things come in, they're just pre-built for you, which is very, very nice. Lightning button, we are going to say, what are we going to do here? Um, on click. And so we're going to add an event handler to it. We're going to call it handle click. And we're going to add that declaratively versus if you're used to other types of JavaScript development where you may, you know, document.query selector, you um, add event handler. In this case, we are just going to add it, add the event handler into the markup directly like this. On click, we're going to give it a label of click me, a variant, a brand. And uh, we've got our anything else. We're going to give it a class. Just We're going to get a little padding or a little margin around it. All right. So we should see this refresh. We should have a button on our page now. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my server. So there we go. We've got a button. It says click me. Now, if we go back to our JavaScript, because remember, we said, wait, so your browser is constantly emitting events, right? So we are saying we want this button is listening for a click event, which is probably the most common event you're ever going to work with when somebody clicks on that button. But 
we have to tell the browser this is what we want you to do when somebody clicks. So we are going to define our handle click, because remember that's what we said that the button is going to do. It's waiting to call this method from JavaScript when somebody clicks on it. And we're going to pass in the event, the event object, which is kind of a goal, and we're just, so for right now, we're just going to say console.log event. And logging things to your console can be a fantastic way to see what is happening when something is running. Looks like I'm missing a curly brace here. You know, I'm just going to delete that whole thing out because I don't like the way it looks. Okay. Event. Event. Something is wrong. Ah, okay. You know what? I was, I am in here because I've got my, because I've got my editor minimized, right? So I'm just, I am just completely working outside of my class body. Um, pardon that. I had to click. I, could, I was like, what is going on here? All right, handle click event. So what we're, let's just, uh, con, let's just log the event to the console. And event, I'm gonna refresh that. We should get rid of that error now. We're gonna open up our developer tools, our Chrome developer tools. And if we click me, we are gonna, so we see we had a mouse event and the event object is just like, kind of like a gold mine of, of information you know, about, about the event that just fired. So if we wanted to say, hey, when this button is clicked, you, we are just going to, we're going to put an alert on the screen. You clicked me. Not sure why. It seems like my, uh, Local environment is running a little bit slow today. There we go. There you go. So we fired off the event when the button was clicked of you clicked me. So that's a real simple look at events, our HTML, our JavaScript. And last, we want to look at our CSS. And CSS is how we set the style of things. So if we wanted to just... We're going to do something really simple for this one. So let's go back to our markup. And we're going to put this button inside a div. So it's got it. We have it inside a container. And I'm going to... Say class equals border. I'm going to go to my CSS now, and I'm going to define a border class. So I'm going to start with a dot for a border. And I'm going to say border. Let's make it a little two picks. Solid red. Refresh. And there you can see, now we used our styling to put a border around our button. So again, this is, I mean, it, this is obviously, these are very simplistic examples, not things you, but it gives you an idea of how these three files work together. How does the HTML and the JavaScript and the CSS, how do they reference each other? How do we bind values? And what's just the real basic fundamental structure of a Lightning Web Component? And the next one, we'll do a little more interactivity with some of our events, some base Lightning Web Components. Uh, but I hope this one was a little useful. And I'll talk to everybody later on. Take a second, if you would, and uh, drop a like and a subscribe down below. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next video. Take care, everybody.